theatre. Who doesn't love theatre? It's been a popular form of storytelling ever since its creation in Greece in the 6th century BC. But with most things, it's also seen a great deal of evolution in its form over time. One period in which theatre evolved greatly is the late 20th century. After going through two world wars, civilization was going through an existential crisis. And, as a result of this zeitgeist, playwrights began to experiment and implement more minimalist or absurd narratives and forms of storytelling. Samuel Beckett is probably one of the most renowned absurdist playwrights of the 20th century. His 1969 minimalist play, Breath, a show which lasts only 35 seconds and strips back nearly all sense of theatricality, perfectly encapsulates the experimental nature of the dramatist. If we compare and contrast Breath to Edward Albee's 1991 play Three Tall Women, which also contains a farcical story, but manages to portray them in a more naturalistic style. By delving deep into these two stage shows, we can see that the differences between the two, whilst communicating similar themes, show that experimental theatre can be just as effective in characterising its theatrical goal, if not more, than naturalistic storytelling. One key connection that the two plays share is the themes that they are working with. Both Three Tall Women and Breath deal with the brevity of life and transitioning into death. Three Tall Women is a lot more upfront with its portrayal. This is done by having each character purposely play the same woman at different ages. A being somewhere in her 90s, B being 52, and C being 26. The character of A reminisces on her life and discusses all the horrible things which happened to her. When asked what the happiest moment of her life was, A responds with the bleak outlook, when it's all done, when we can stop. Beckett's breath, on the other hand, has a far more abstract approach to the theme of Thanatopsis. In Act 1, we see faint lights hit the stage. In Act 2, we hear an instant vegetus. Vegetus meaning cry of a newborn. This is then followed by a recorded inspiration, expiration, and another use of vegetus before the lights fade to black. Due to the apparent lack of character and dialogue, we as the audience can interpret that each act in the play represents a different stage in life. We are born, we take a breath, and then we die. This is even further backed up by Beckett once explaining that the play is not dissimilar to the idea that we enter, we shout, and that's life. We shout, we go out, and that's death. Although both plays share a very similar theme, we can see that they have been done in dramatically different ways. But why? Elby's play follows a far more naturalistic way, having the characters discuss the theme throughout the dialogue, whereas Beckett leaves the audience contemplating what they just experienced. Even though Elby's play was created after Beckett's, he may have chosen to use a widely more accepted portrayal of his themes due to the fact that more people would understand what he was trying to say. This, although, does not change the fact that meaning can be extracted from breath. Now, character may be one of the most drastic differences between the two plays. Elby approaches his characters in his storytelling in a very Stanislavski approach, where each character is very well formed and mirrors that of believable people. Elby, when discussing the meaning of the play, once said, I guess it's about a woman we don't like very much in Act 1 and we get to like a little better in Act 2. This definitely comes across in the stage play. The characters of A, B, and C all come across to the audience as genuine, although unlikable people in Act 1. It's only till Act 2 when we are told that each of the characters all represent the same person, only at different ages. Elby has also heavily implied that the lady in this play is based off that of his adopted mother, Frances Cotter which further shows that he is using real-life inspiration to create the characters in his play. Beckett, on the other hand, probably created his characters in the same way famous painter Robert Rauschenberg approached his 1951 white painting series, or how John Cage created his musical composition 4.33. Beckett boiled down the characters and their intentions so much in this play that they are just a figment of what they once were. They have been reduced to that of a non-existent character who is represented by simple light cues, mixed with the sound of somebody breathing. 
This is effective due to the fact that Beckett has created a character who, although does not contain any physical form, has a certain presence on stage. It actually allows the audience to become the protagonist of this obscure narrative and possibly even let them reflect on their own life and its brevity. Set design is actually another point of concurrence between the two plays. Both Albie and Beckett have pointed out in their scripts specific notes on how the set is to be constructed. Three Tall Women describes the set as a wealthy bedroom, which is French in feeling. It then goes on to describe intricate details of the room, such as the colour of carpet and the material used for specific objects found in the room. The intricate detail of the set is then used as a theatrical device to allow the audience to be immersed in the drama and become more invested with what they're watching. Breath's set description, on the other hand, although brief, still packs a punch. It is described as rubbish, no verticals, all scattered and lying. Becker was so particular with his directions that during the first ever production of Breath, he threatened to take the director, Kenneth Tynan, to court by the fact that he used naked bodies laid upon one another instead of actual rubbish. Becker then decided that the incident wasn't worth the argument and dropped any legal allegations. By using a dire void of trash, Becker is allowing us as a viewer to put even further interpretation into what the play is about. He makes the audience scrounge through the rubbish and put their own perspective on what kind of world it is. Is it a void of space we call limbo? Or is it a visualization of society, which is degraded to the point where only simple rubbish stands victorious? I think the fact that Beckett, although creating a very experimental play, which is stripped of nearly all forms of theatricality, has decided to retain a detailed description of what the set must look like. This proves that he wasn't completely revolting against theatre, but instead recognised that set has an impact on the effectiveness of the stage play. Through comparing and contrasting the theatrical qualities of Samuel Beckett's Breath and Edward Albee's Three Tall Women, we are able to establish that Beckett has gone against the grain of naturalistic theatre and stripped back the elements of theatre, such as theme, character, and set design. By doing this, Beckett is still able to produce a production which is just as effective as the naturalistic storytelling found in Albee's production. But this does leave us with one final question. Why hasn't this form of experimental theatre become the new normal? If we can form the same conclusion from a 35 second play with no inherent meaning rather than what the social norm is, then why don't we? Is it a matter of accessibility? Is the zeitgeist we are living in now not ready for a tonal shift? I suppose only time will tell.